Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more. Call us right now for more help at 866-945-8070. How to record a negative deposit in QuickBooks Online. First of all, why would you want to, right? The classic case here, and there's going to be other contexts in which this will come up, but the classic situation is um, receiving credit card payments from customers, and unfortunately, sometimes we have to refund a customer's money. And when we do that, there might come along a day when we have more in refunds that we've issued than we do in payments that we've received. So we end up with a net negative deposit, which for all intents and purposes is ultimately a payment. The credit card processor is going to actually take money out of our account instead of doing what they normally do, which is put money into it. Now, in QuickBooks Desktop, you're able to actually record that as a negative deposit. You would check off the items from undeposited funds and you would be able to check off more negative items than positive ones, and QuickBooks would know how to handle it. QuickBooks Online does not let you do this, so we need to work around it, and I need to show you exactly what this looks like. And the simple and quick answer before we go to my screen is we're going to use a clearing account. We're not going to use undeposited funds for this transaction. We'll use part of undeposited funds, but it's not going to go from undeposited funds into the bank account. Everything's going to run through a clearing account, and then we're going to record the payment out of the bank account to the clearing, to zero everything out. Let me show you what this looks like. Hey, Seth David here from the world famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated. This time we're talking about how to record a negative deposit in QuickBooks Online. Now you're wondering why on earth would I ever want to record a negative deposit in QuickBooks Online? And if you're asking that question, it's probably because you haven't actually encountered this situation yet. But if you take credit cards as a form of payment in your business, then there's a good chance you're going to encounter this if you haven't already. And what I'm talking about is that day is going to come, hopefully few and far between, but that day will come when you have refunds or chargebacks, heaven forbid, that exceed on one particular day the amount of payments you've received. Now in QuickBooks Desktop, that would translate to a negative deposit. And with QuickBooks Desktop from within undeposited funds, you could check off all the credits and the payments, and it would actually record a deposit that was negative in amount. That was the only scenario in QuickBooks Desktop in which you were able to do this, is when you were pulling credits and payments out of undeposited funds so that it would actually let you record a negative deposit, which of course would show up in your bank account as a payment out of the account. Because what it means is essentially the credit card company had to take away more money than it was giving you on that one particular day. QuickBooks Online does not allow you to do that. And here's what I mean. If I go to make a deposit, bank deposit, And I have, I've created the scenario, of course, I have a refund of $1,000 that was taken out of my account on October 1st, and I've got a payment that I received from a customer that was coming into my account on the same day. Well, if I check these off, the net amount is a negative $500 deposit. And if I go to hit save and close, it tells me I have to specify a transaction amount that is greater than zero. In other words, as of the time I'm recording this, the functionality of recording a negative deposit does not exist, but we do need to deal with this. So what do we do? The answer actually is pretty simple. Here's what we're gonna do. First, we're gonna edit the refund. So I'm gonna say, yes, I wanna leave without saving. And instead of putting the refund into undeposited funds, we're going to put it into a clearing account. Now you can call this a specific clearing account name or just create a generic clearing account as I've done here. It doesn't really matter. And that's the only thing we're going to do differently. Instead of recording the refund receipt into undeposited funds or refunding it from, we're refunding it from the clearing. I'm going to hit save and close. And it says it's successfully issued. I'll click OK. Now, We have to deal with this. This we can deal with, but remember, we're ultimately going to want this combined with that refund. So I'm going to check this off, but I'm not going to deposit it into the bank account. I am going to deposit, I'm going to deposit this also into the clearing account. Notice the clearing account is set up as other current assets, and you are able to record bank deposits into any account that is of an account type of other current assets, as well as accounts designated, of course, as bank accounts. And let's date this back to October 1st because that's when it all happened. And the dates are really important here because you want things to line up to make it easy for you to determine that they are in fact zeroing out ultimately exactly the way they need to be. So the dates are really, really important on this stuff. So we take the payment, the positive amount, and again, put that through the clearing. I'll hit save and close. 
Now what we'll have, if I go to my chart of accounts now, is we'll show a clearing account with the net negative $500. So now it's actually pretty easy to deal with because all I've got to do is record an expense. I can even do it as a transfer, but these things I tend to like to do as an expense. Transfers are more limited in terms of the kind of information that you can include. An expense or a check, and a check is really just an expense without a check number, or an expense rather is really a check without a check number. You get the point. Anyway, um, I have more flexibility here. I can even leave the payee blank. It's coming out of my checking account, but here it's going into the clearing account. And again, the dates matter here. So I'm going to set that on October 1st because that's when it happened. And the net negative amount or the net amount that came out of my checking account was $500. And I'm going to show you in a second after I hit save and close that our clearing account will in fact zero out because it's almost as though we transferred this money from our checking into that clearing, right? And ultimately this transaction will reconcile with the bank because that's what our bank account is going to show. It's going to show a $500 payment net of everything. So let's hit save and close. And now we're back to our chart of accounts. And sure enough, the clearing account is here. Let's click view register. I always like to kind of go on the side of doubting things. So I always like to just look in and make sure that it all makes sense. So here's my $1,000 payments coming in, right? This is actually my refund up here. And over here is the payment that I recorded that really ultimately zeroed this all out, right? They're all dated on the same day. So it goes in order of the amount uh, within the same day when you're looking in the register. But ultimately, I can see that on October 1st, this all zeroes out perfectly. That, my friends, is how to record a negative deposit in QuickBooks Online and why you might need to.